I'd like you to think on this site of Herod's tomb about one reality, that death takes everything away from us except the promises of God. Everything else gets taken away. For just a minute, think of everything you have, including your family and your money and everything. Everything gets taken away at the instant of death except the promises of God. Everything else. Salvation is a promise from God. Heaven is a promise from God. Eternal reward is a promise from God. Uh, that we will see our loved ones is a promise from God. Death takes everything away from us except for the promises of God. And the question I'm going to ask over and over on this spot is, how many of the promises of God are you aware of? How many are you holding on to? Because death takes everything away from you and me except for the promises of God. Verse 1 of Matthew chapter 2. Now after Jesus was born in Bethlehem, just off in the distance, of Judea in the days of Herod the king. When Herod was king, he was king. You're standing on his mountain. Herod, who made statements by everything he built, he built what was the largest palace in the ancient world. You're standing on top of the largest palace. It was 35 acres in total. He built a lush tropical paradise in the midst of a desert. In defiance of the desert, he built his own mountain where there was no mountain. Just as you've seen at Caesarea, he built a palace out in the ocean. Masada, he built a palace that hung out over the desert. In Jerusalem, he built his own platform to build the, the largest monumental structure of the ancient world, that huge temple mount and the temple above it. Herod was king. I mean, in his day, he could move mountains, he could build mountains, he could build stuff that no one else had ever built, and Herod had it all while he was alive. And you can have it all while you're alive, but death takes everything away except God's promises. And God promised to Herod, who knew the Old Testament, that the wicked, Psalm 73 says, the wicked will build places and make a name for themselves, but when they die, nothing goes with them except the promises of God. What promise does Herod eternally get to look forward to? He gets the promise that his family, Herod and his children and grandchildren and great-grandchildren, in all the Bible, no family had more direct exposure with God than they did. Herod, baby Jesus. His son, growing up Jesus. His grandson, grown up Jesus. His great-grandson, the apostles of Jesus. As far as we know, none of Herod's family responded to God. They got him personally to stand in front of him. Herod's grandson had Jesus look him in the eye. How many of us? I mean, we'd give anything to see Jesus standing there and talk to him for a minute. Jesus wouldn't even talk to him because he rejected the truth that he knew from the Word of God. Death takes everything away from us except the promises of God. Look at all this, and it's wonderful that Herod made it, and I think he was a genius. It doesn't do him any good. He lived his whole life for what was taken away at the instant of his death. Death takes everything out of our possession except for the promises of God. I would read my Bible a little more closely in the days ahead with this scene, this great entrance, this tomb right there, and the, the scraped away mountain down there, Bethlehem and Jerusalem way off in the distance. And think about, in Herod's day, he only thought that he was on top of it all. He had everything. He had palaces everywhere. He had gardens in the desert. He had swimming pools in the ocean. He had such wealth that they hung his gold in the temple. They just hung it out for everybody to see. He had so much, he didn't have to hide it. He just hung it out everywhere. He had everything. But death takes everything out of our hands except for the promises of God. On this spot, we're going to have a little worship time. I want you to just, as it were spiritually, look down in your hands and see exactly what is it you're holding on to that will never be taken away from you. Are you holding on to the promises of God that we saw at the beginning of the trip? Jesus said, I designed you for a purpose. Are you, are you saying, hey, I believe that. I'm going to do what you made me to do. Are you holding on to the promise of God? He said, I'll never leave you or forsake you. 
How about the promise he says that, that if you give what you can't hold on to, remember he says that we are supposed to sacrifice in his name and we'll never lose our reward? I mean, some of you last night were buying widow's mites, those little coins that, that are so small they hide between your fingers. But Jesus saw the widow drop that in the treasury. It wasn't what she gave, it's what it cost her to give it. And, and Jesus made a promise. Everything that costs you something, like getting up in the morning, reading his word, praying, even after someone forgets to remind you to pray, you keep holding on to that request. All those little sacrifices we make to meet with the Lord in his word, to meet with him in prayer, to, to give what costs us something, you're holding in your hand a promise. God says you will never lose your reward. Hey, a big one is, if you turn someone to righteousness, you will shine like a star forever. If you get a minute, I don't know about the lights of Jerusalem, but go out and look up at the sky. Look at those stars. They can't be hidden. They're so bright and beautiful. Jesus said, those that turn others to righteousness, as, as a faithful witness, as a Sunday school teacher, as a faithful servant of Christ's church, as supporting missions or being a missionary, there's a promise you can hold. If you turn someone to righteousness, you'll shine like a star forever. You know, Jesus said that he is going to reward us for what we do in our life. Herod, he got his reward here. At death, it all, boom, everything in his hands was gone. And all he was left with was suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. That's another promise. Anybody who dies with their sin on themselves instead of on Christ suffers the vengeance of eternally paying for their own sin. And sin is so bad, it takes forever to pay for. And that's the promise, Herod, the only one he had when he died. I have the promise in my hands that, like we saw in Scapegoat Mountain, that when I said, Jesus, I can't save myself, I, I confess I'm a sinner, and I ask you to take my sin. When I confessed and placed my sin on Christ, he took it upon himself, and I'm holding on to that promise that Jesus Christ's blood has cleansed me from all sin. Hold on to those promises. Let's bow before the Lord here and thank him for those promises that we have right now. Father in heaven, in Herod's day he had it all. We can have it all too. But at death, everything is stripped away from us except for your promises. Right here on this spot, may your people hold tightly grip in their hands your promises and may we be lifelong collectors students of and possessors of your promises O oh Lord because your promises are the only thing that will never never be taken away from us if we hold them in the hands of faith and by faith lay hold on your great faithfulness that you do not change what you promised we will have forever. O oh Lord, we trust you. And we ask you to help us to hold those promises. In the name of Jesus, we pray.